Coming up, when disaster strikes, it's Anna to the rescue. Life in the fast lane with a whippet. And this singer takes it to the streets. At the ripe old age of eight, Anna is one of the top search and rescue dogs in the U.S. This golden retriever and her handler, Rick Lee, searched at the World Trade Center site. Few search and rescue dogs have the stamina and skills required for urban disaster searches. We were at the World Trade Center and we were challenged with very, uh, very difficult terrain. She flew across that debris like it was a lawn in front of somebody's house. She had no agility issues whatsoever there. Today, Anna's unique balancing skills still astound Rick. She doesn't reposition, she just hangs out. I mean, any other dog would just go, why, why don't I just move? Anna, out. Urban disasters can happen at any time. So Rick hones Anna's skills by training with her regularly at the fire station where he's captain. To stay ready for anything, Rick uses any spare time at work for training with Anna. We try to do a little bit of search work and we do some ladder operations. And that way we can keep uh, her tuned and their skill levels up really high on a constant basis. Coming down is very hard for a dog. We don't want them to be stressed or, or shut down at the end because uh, you need to perform once you get to the end of the ladder. Good job. With that bonding and that trust I have with her, she just does about anything I ask her to do. Easy. Anna is a very social dog and loves the attention she gets at the station. First thing she does is beeline out of the car and run to the inside or any, any of the guys outside and wants attention. And she's looking for a toy or that attention. Anna's play drive is what makes her a top search and rescue dog. Her reward is play, and she'll do anything for it. So I don't mind her being playing ball, messing around with the guys, you know, laying about, getting away with things. Because when the bell hits or when we're ready to train, she's right there on the tee, ready to go, and does a great job. This weekend, Anna and Rick will take part in an intensive training workshop for urban disaster dogs and their handlers. It's called the Iron Dog. Rick will compare Anna to the younger up-and-comers to see if her skills are still sharp enough to continue working. I know that the green waste, we didn't get to the back portion. No, we did not. 40 urban disaster dogs and their handlers have come from all over for an intensive weekend of specialized training. Anna was the first dog ever trained for this elite force. Plaus Davern was her trainer. She was a wild child. She came with boundless energy, boundless enthusiasm, and a never-ending desire to learn and absorb the material that she had to, with it, the downside being that she would never stop. It was never enough. When her training was finished, Anna was paired with Rick. She is exceptional. She has what we call spatial awareness. For instance, the wobbly monster, which you know is, is a very difficult piece of equipment. She is the only dog ever that I've trained who got on that and said, Oh, yes, I can do this. It's dawn at the Iron Dog Competition Disaster Town. This defunct army base is ground zero for the workshop. The site offers a variety of disaster simulation possibilities. The dogs will experience all kinds of terrain and rubble while honing their most important skill, finding a missing person. A volunteer is hiding in the rubble. Anna and the other dogs must find her. The handlers head in with their dogs, followed closely by the trainers. But before going into the rubble, Anna needs some protective gear. The booties shield her paws, but they make walking more challenging. So basically, I put a, a human shoe on her. Now she only has one pad that she has to manipulate her feet on as she moves about the rubble. The site is chaotic, dark, and dusty. Eight-year-old Anna appears confident. The 
young recruits are monitored closely. Anna picks up live human scent, which comes from the skin cells people constantly shed. I can move some of this stuff and just have her check it. Check, up here. you know. She can go in it, and I can watch her. She's down. Okay. Good. Shifting rubble makes Anna's job dangerous. Good girl. Good girl. Uh, you have to be really careful on when you send them down a hole like that. You don't know where it goes. It could drop again. Oh, is there anybody in there? Anna's closing in. She looks like she has scent. Showing interest. So now she'll try to gain access. And we got an alert. Anna's bark signals she's found a live person. You gotta get out of there. OK, you gotta get out. You gotta get out. Whoopee, you gotta get her. As much as possible, we have the victim engage in the reward. Then we get this bond, and we get that motivation, that drive for them to want to find these people through this type of terrain, whatever it takes to get there. The National Disaster Search Dog Foundation organized the weekend. After the Oklahoma City bombing in 1995, authorities realized there was an acute need for dogs trained in search and rescue at urban disaster sites. Wilma Melville created the foundation. Many of the task forces that came to that bombing site came without canines. And some came with canines, but not certified in any way. So you had no clue what those dogs would do, or even if they would do the job. The disaster search canines require a very high skill level. So therefore, they're just like the Top Gun pilots in the Navy, and they're the best of the best. The workshop provides all kinds of terrain for Anna and the other disaster dogs to practice on. This handler sends his young chocolate lab out to search. Unclear on the concept, the pooch decides to come back for a visit. The dogs are trained for different disaster scenarios. Here, a volunteer hides under a pallet and vegetation, simulating the aftermath of a natural disaster like a hurricane. This little guy seems to be following in Anna's footsteps. After several days of searching through rubble, these novice iron dogs can't wait to get out of their work boots. Not every dog is as adventurous as Anna. Or as graceful as she is. These rookies could use a lesson from Anna on how it's done. This weekend, she's proven she's as sharp as ever. She can really show a lot of people what dogs are capable of doing. It'd be very hard for me to find another dog like Anna. It's, she's just one of a kind. Good job. On a frosty October morning, John Bishop is up early to take his 19-month-old whippet, Bill, on one of his two daily walks. Bill is a racing whippet and needs constant exercise to keep him in top shape. Twice a day, from March to October, John trains Bill. He brings him to a favorite quiet place where there are no other dogs to distract him. John thinks Bill was born to run. Bill loves it. He loves running. It's bred into him. Makes them sleep as well at night when they had a good day's running. They uh, contented as well. John's wife, Monica, helps with the training. Go, Billy. She holds Bill while John shakes a good soft, boy. furry good cloth, good similar boy. to the lure Bill chases Come when he's racing. On, the whippets think they're chasing a rabbit, so the cloth is called a bunny. Come on, get a bunny. Good boy. 
He's not a playful dog. They'd rather chase a cat or anything that moves in the garden. Uh, but he's not a, one of these whippets that like playing with the ball. Race training can only begin once whippet pups are a year old. Bill's been training for six months or so. As he runs faster, John increases the distance, building up Bill's endurance. John hopes training will turn Bill into a national champion like his father, Wilf, another one of John's whippets. After training, Bill heads home. John always keeps him on a leash. Whippets have got no road sense, no discipline at all. You couldn't walk them on a road or on a street without a lead. Any time you'd see a cat or a small dog, they'd be chasing it. Racing and a love of cat chasing runs in the family. Bill gets it from his dad, Wilf. Unfortunately, brown spotted Wilf's been sidelined. He injured his leg early in the season. John's keeping Wilf from racing so his injury can heal properly. When he was injured, yes, we were very upset, but I think sometimes fate has a way of coming round and it gave us more time to spend with Bill and train him up to hopefully one day achieve what his father's achieved. John and Monica are devoted to their whippets, all five of them. Whippets are so bony, they'll take over any soft surface. They make excellent pets. They're calm, affectionate, and quiet. They're wicked creatures, really, because you don't leave a cake or anything on the table. Or My wife left my dinner on the side the other day, went outside to the, put the washing on the line and come back, and my dinner had gone. Aww. To relax the night before Bill's race, John and Monica take the dogs to the pub. John Wood, who runs the Buckingham pub, gets a real kick out of it. When uh, John and Monica come in, they bring their whippets in, my wife brings her whippets in, they all get together in the lounge here, they have a bit of a, a, a scallywags around together. There's an elderly gentleman that comes in in the evening, especially to see the whippets, and bless his heart, they know he has got food for them. <laughs> With his nose in the bag, it looks like Bill's carbo loading for tomorrow's race. It's race day in Worcester. Bill and John join about 90 racing whippets from all over England. It's a festival of whippets. Whippet racing is an amateur event organized by pet owners. Unlike greyhounds, the dogs aren't sent to kennels and prepared for racing by trainers. There is no money in racing, no organized betting. The whole point is to have fun. The first step is the weigh-in. The Whippets love racing. Meet a lot of wonderful people. A few bob back. And it's just a wonderful sport. 23. Like racehorses, the dog's legs are protected by bandages. Now Bill's ready, but John's nervous. As long as he behaves himself and follows in his dad's footsteps, then we should have a good day. We hope, fingers crossed. Bill watches, eager for his turn to run. There are a few races before his. OK, can we have the runners, please, for the first three races towards the traps? Race one, Saxon Gold, kind of gorgeous, Bonsai Bunny. <laughs> The course is 150 yards long, from the starting traps to the electronically timed finish. The dogs chase a lure which they think is prey. They wear muzzles so they can't bite each other because they think they're competing for food. The fastest dogs can cover the course in 9.5 seconds. Some of the top dogs in England are here today, so Bill faces some tough competition. Bill has been disqualified in the past for crossing the track and bumping into other dogs, like this black whippet with the red dickey. Will Bill be disqualified today, too? The word whippet comes from the expression whippet, to move quickly. Developed from crossing the greyhound, the Italian greyhound and the terrier, whippets are the ultimate sprinters. 
they can go from zero to a speed of 37 miles or 67 kilometers per hour in seconds. It's time for Bill's first race. He's wearing number one red. Next race, right? Next race. <laughs> Bill has got to learn to follow the lure. He's got to get his mind fixed and of getting through the open gaps. But he's just got to learn to uh, use his brain to get through the other dogs to get in front. Bill seems calm and focused. Good boy. Good boy. Morning. Good dog. And he's off. Fred, yes, he's just one. Oh. Round one is over oh, in no, mere seconds. Be. Bill's win means he gets to race again. Now, I don't know who he's drawn against yet, but there's some class dogs in it. And if he gets second, I'll love it. I love him really to win it, like, but uh, all depends on the draw. I don't know who I've got yet. Bill's raring to go for his second race. This time, he's number three, white. And they're off like the wind. In the blink of an eye, Bill gets crowded out. Come on, come on, good lad. There's a good lad. There's a good lad. I think you got knocked out then, boy. Monica consoles mm -hmm. Bill after a yeah, tough race. Third. That's it. He just managed to finish third out of five good dogs, which was two racing champions in there, and they were all experienced, seeing he's only a young dog. Very proud of him. He ran very well. Bill did well at the race. John thinks that with more practice at their quiet spot by the river, he'll be a champ someday. Banjo and Houston are hairless Chinese crested dogs. The Aztecs use these dogs as bed warmers. So do Michelle and Veronique Rieu. But Banjo is much more than a bed warmer. As the lead singer in Les Rieuti, the family's busking act, he's the main breadwinner. I wanted a singing dog because I do a show, and it was for the highlight of the show. So I thought a singing dog would definitely make a huge impact. And it sure does. Chinese Cresteds are friendly family dogs, but they're fragile. Benjo is very delicate because, as you can see, he's very pale. So his skin is very sensitive to the sun. We have to keep him covered, and he needs sunscreen. Winter is coming. It's a tough season for a fragile, cold-fearing, hairless dog. Banjo gets cold very easily because he has no fur. That's why we're planning on going to Florida for the winter. We'd like to sing in Florida. It'll be better down there because up here it'll be 30 below. <laughs> Today, Banjo, we have to make a lot of money. It's time for a quick rehearsal. Going to Florida requires cash, so the whole family relies on Banjo's talent and success to get them away from winter. And maybe one day we'll see his name in lights, Banjo the king of rock and roll. Banjo reaches for the high C. He throws himself into his singing body and soul. The technique I developed to get Banjo to sing is my secret. Unless Banjo wants to reveal his technique. But I doubt it because Banjo and I are sworn to secrecy. Banjo? One, two, three. 
making a rockin' dog. Houston is supposed to be Banjo's backup singer, but so far, he isn't showing the same flair for performance. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a cookie. Banjo dresses up for what they hope will be one of his last performances in Montreal this season. His wardrobe is quite extensive. The clothes are for the show and also to keep them warm because the dogs really feel the cold. They have fall clothes, they have summer clothes, they have bathing suits, even a cowboy hat. They have everything. The more money this tiny fur-free busker raises today, the sooner the Riuti will be in Florida. The Riuti are lucky. For November, the weather today is quite mild, a bonus for Banjo. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud, very proud to introduce the one, the only... Banjo! Quelques jours, on verra esprit dans le ciel. Banjo, le roi du rock and roll. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. Thank you. Banjo singing is a hit, and the money starts to roll in. Bravo, Banjo, bravo. Banjo's done it again. Flush with cash, the Riuti can leave for Florida, where all Banjo will need to wear is sunscreen. <laughs>